You use your aim in nearly every single game you play. And in order to get your aim at a level where you can dominate even in immortal and radiant lobbies, it's mainly knowing these 5 simple yet effective tips that you need to always remember. The first tip is stop wasting time practicing wrong. Many players fail to realize how much time they have before they need to shoot their gun. Everyone thinks that you need to have that 0.001% reaction time to win any fight, where in reality, that just isn't the case and you have a lot more time than you think you do. I've seen so many of my students in ranked instantly shake and start crouch praying the moment someone shows up on their screen. However, in deathmatch, they're a lot calmer and more calculated with their movements and crosshair placement. So the question is, how are you able to transfer that deathmatch skill into your ranked games? There are a couple of things you can do. First thing I recommend is practicing with intentions. Many people just simply turn into autopilot mode and start blasting music and mindlessly running it down. Don't do this. This is simply a waste of time and you're getting little to no value out of this. Whenever you are playing DMs, have a certain focus in mind in your games to practice. For example, having one DM focusing on cross replacement or having another DM focus on simply one taps. These are just a few examples, but always practice with intention. This is literally the most surefire way to improve in the shortest amount of time possible. The second thing that I recommend doing is to play your deathmatches like they are ranked games. The reason why people are so garbage and ranked but are gods and DMs is because they treat it like two different entities, which is the complete wrong approach to have. Treating your DMs like they are fights and ranked will allow you to not only take the fights more seriously and gain more value from them, but it also helps you immensely prepare for these fights as well when you approach them in your ranked games. And you also need to try emulating the environment you have in your ranked games. For example, if you play DMs in a certain style of music, such as classical music, then put the same music on in ranked. Or if you often catch yourself in Discord talking to your friends a lot, try playing a couple without them and focus in when there are no distractions around you. The next tip is that there is a reason why these pro players have such good aim. No matter what skill level you're at or how good you think you are, never neglect the fundamentals. The core reason why players like Tens and Demon1 have such stellar mechanics isn't because they have some secret aim routine or some secret gamer juice that they drink. They have simply put in the hundreds of hours developing and mastering the core fundamentals of Valorant. Take LeBron for example. How many free throws do you think he shot before he became the best in the world? Or take Ronaldo. How many defender drills did he do to be the best striker in the world? Now how many times do you think Tens or Demon1 has practiced their crosshair placement, counter strafing, movement, utility usage, and their general raw mechanics and aim trainers? Yeah, probably hundreds to thousands of hours as well. And I'm not telling you to do the same unless you're trying to reach that pro status, but if you are trying to reach the top 0.01% of Valorant players or just reach that next rank, then you need to emulate something similar, especially if you have no prior FBX experience. So stop neglecting the fundamentals and really hone down on them. The next tip is very similar to the second one, which is figuring out your biggest weaknesses. A lot of players think they have perfect aim, when in reality, they are far from it. You need to drop your ego and swallow your pride and understand that everyone, and that includes you watching this video, has something to learn and something they need to improve at. Now, how do I find my biggest weakness in Valorant? My biggest tip in order to do this is to simply sit down and write out all of the mechanics that you can think of in Valorant, such as your cross replacement, your flow your tracking, reaction time, your utility usage, and your overall movement. And rank them all from a scale of 1 to 10. This will allow you to vaguely engage your personal skill level and see where you need to go to improve. Also, do not be shy about it either and be brutally honest with yourself. If you're not brutally honest and see your faults objectively, then you will never reach the ranks that you want. And if you need more help in that area, I do offer coaching. If you simply join my Discord in the description, you can see all my past students' achievements and descriptions on how I can elevate your game in the shortest amount of time possible. I'm only taking a couple more students for December, so shoot me a DM and book a session today. The next tip is confidence is key to good aim. Raise your hand if you consider yourself an unconfident player. 
If you're raising your hand, we need to change that right now. The key to being successful in nearly anything, anything, is your confidence in yourself. Many players I know and talk to refuse to think they are good enough and believe that they will never reach their goals because of one bad game or one toxic player. You need to put yourself higher. The reason I'm able to perform in games and reach numbers like being top 1000 of all of North America is surely my confidence in my gameplay and my overall mechanics. I am not scared to take fights, I am not scared to make plays, and I'm definitely not scared to carry my games. Many people overthink and overcomplicate every single decision they make and completely forget what Valorant is all about, which is a tactical shooter. Sometimes you just need to take those fights, or need to make a play even if it's the quote unquote the least optimal play. And even if you do make a mistake, that's alright as well. You can't expect yourself to be the most perfect player. All you can really expect yourself to do is to do everything with full confidence in yourself to succeed. And most of the time, you can get away with these poor decisions because of this. But still remember, being confident does not excuse you from making these dumb and stupid plays. You should still try to use all the context clues you have and the information you get before making decisions. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you have no idea what to do, whatever decision you do end up making in that moment, you need to have full confidence in yourself that you are better and that you have made the right one. Even if it was an objectively wrong play or an unoptimal one. That is what VOD review is for. And I know this is a very complicated topic and I will 100% make a video about how to maximize your confidence in and outside of the game. So if this video gets say five likes, I'll make that video ASAP. The fifth and last tip is to stop changing your settings and agents that you play. Stop. I mean, stop changing your settings every round and changing agents every game and expect to consistently perform and aim at your best. I know. Tens does it. But again, he has thousands upon thousands of hours in FBS games, which allows him to literally play on any setting imaginable because of this. However, you most likely don't. Stop changing your sense after every whiff or change your agent after every unfortunate game you have. Stick to what works and what has been working. When I reached the moral for my first time, I stuck to three agents max and played them and mastered them all the way until I reached the mortal. And if you think that the agent you play doesn't affect your aim, you are wholeheartedly mistaken. There are some agents geared to more fast and tracking mechanics such as rays, and some agents that focus on more slow and methodical aiming styles like Sova. Switching over to different roles and agents messes up your overall tempo in the game and your playstyle they have been developing subconsciously over your whole time playing Valorant. So I'm making this so much harder for yourself and trust your intuition, trust the process, and most importantly, trust yourself. You are good enough to reach your goals, but you need to stick it out and stop changing what is working for you just because of a couple poor performances. Thanks everyone for watching today's video and I generally hoped you learned something today. Again, if you haven't already, make sure to join my Discord in the description to meet like-minded players who are striving to improve in Valorant just like you. Also, shoot me a DM if you feel stuck or lost in Valorant and need that extra push to reach that next level. Again, thanks for watching and if you want to see my thought process in a Moral 3 and Radiant Lobbies, then make sure to check my last video where I do an in-depth breakdown each play I do.